Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to implement our own function of promise.all. Now promise.all is something that is available already in JavaScript, but this is just for practice and to understand how to work with promises. So without further ado, let's get started. So we are working right now with a Node.js project and you would have something like promise.all and here it accepts an array of promises and then you can do something like dot then and in here you can get the result and this result is basically an array of all the results of all the promises so this word essentially contain the results array you could call it results arr and here we are going to do console.log results array and then in case of error we can basically say catch and here we get error and here we can say console.log and error now Remember that promise.all works in a way that if all of the promises have been resolved only then we are going to get this function executed which means that this whole promise will be resolved. Otherwise if even any one of the promises have an error then we'll get this catch function or catch callback called because not all of them were resolved. This promise.all basically is a promise so it's a combination of all the promises so it's a promise that essentially combines the result of all the results of the promises i think i've said it too many times so now what we need is essentially some fake promises so we are going to create some fake promises that we can work with so let's say we call this const fake promise and this is how you would create a fake promise function so let's create an arrow function of it this should return a new promise so we can say new promise and then essentially this has two things either resolve or reject so what we are going to do is this fake promise will take two values one the value that it needs to return back or resolve with the promise and the duration because we are faking it we can tell it how much time to take for this asynchronous action so here we could say something like duration now in this promise or in this new promise which is being returned we are going to essentially just resolve it immediately for now so we can say something like resolve and here we can give it value if i do this i can start using this fake promise by just saying fake promise and here we can say one two three as the value if i run this you will see that in the console we will get the results arr 123 already i can now add a couple of more promises just like this for example this could be four five six and here this could be seven eight nine and i need to provide a comma here now if i run this you will see that we'll get an array of all the values that are being resolved from this fake promise so as i mentioned this whole promise.all is a single promise that returns the results of all the promises combined into an array as we already know now if even one of these would be rejected then we'll get an error so let's implement a functionality where we can reject it so let's say the third parameter here could be reject so in this particular situation i can give this one null for the duration for example we are not using it and for reject we can say true now instead of reject we can call it reject force instead of reject because we already have a reject inside here so we can say reject force which is going to be true so in this case we can simply check if reject force is true then we are just going to say reject and then we can basically send an error here so we could say something like new error something went wrong and we are also going to just return from here so we don't have to resolve in this case now for the third fake promise it's going to be crashing because of this reject so if i run this you're going to see that we get into the catch phrase where we are logging the error here and the error is something went wrong because this was failing or this basically was force rejected now that we have the fake promise working let's talk about how we can implement our own promise function so here we could say something like cons promises combined let's say this is the function or this is the name that i came up with this is essentially going to take the same input as promise.all this is going to take an array of promises so here we can say something like this is going to be promises arr which is the array of promises now similar to promise.all which essentially returns a single promise this should also do return new promise so we are essentially returning a new promise which should have resolved and reject as well and then what this would do is this would start looking into the promises that it has received as an input suppose that we got three fake promises that went inside in this function that would mean that this whole promise can only return a value back when 
this is positive which means this was resolved this one was positive and this one was positive now these could take different amount of times for example the first promise might resolve in two seconds the second one three seconds the third one maybe seven seconds but it will wait until all of them are resolved and then only it would return an error in the case of even one of them failing for example this one fails then this would not return a success but it would rather return an error so i hope you understand now what's happening now to simulate this case where we have different sort of numbers or durations we can use this new duration variable for this what we are going to do is we are just going to wrap this whole code inside a set timeout so we can say set timeout and here we are going to create a function we are going to use duration here as a second parameter but within this function we are going to put this code so everything is exactly the same we have just moved this code inside the set timeout function with the duration and now i can also pass the duration so here let's say the first one takes about 500 milliseconds the second one takes about a thousand milliseconds and the third one takes for example 2000 milliseconds which means that if i now run this this is going to wait for two seconds because the longest duration is two seconds to wait for resolving all of these so if i run this you see one two and now we should get the result even though if it failed now if all of them would be passing it would still take two seconds and it would show the result just like this so you might see this result in two seconds when you run this now that we understand how this is working we are going to work with the promises array so here we can start looping over them so we can say something like four and here we can say const promise or pr of promises array so we can say promises arr and here we are going to loop over them one by one now you need to understand that as i mentioned before we need to work with all of these three promises and wait for them to be resolved and the resulting array here is essentially the array of this data so the first data would go here then the second data would be put in this array with a for example a comma and then the third data would also in the case of success be here so this would be an array of three elements that's what we are working with so in this case we need that array because in the end we are going to resolve that as this then method or as a result of this then callback we need an array here so we can say something like results arr we are going to mark it empty array or we are going to initialize this with an empty array and once we are working with each promise we are going to take the result of each promise and push that into this results array so we can here do something like promise dot then because this is a promise we can also rename this to promise for example and here we can say promise dot then or you could also say something like current promise if that makes more sense so we can say current promise dot then and in this then callback we get the result and in this result we are going to essentially just do this we are going to say results arr dot push and then here we are going to pass this result and that's it now this is going to happen for all of the three cases now that we have this we can actually start running this so let's say we use promises combined instead of promise.all and if i run this you will see that we are probably never going to get the result and that is because we are not resolving the main promise there is no promise resolved which is promises combined so this array results array is never sent back for that we need to make sure that we know when to send the final result and if you see the diagram again as i mentioned we are going to send this result back when we have all the three data which means this array contains all the three results so it could be three results four results based on how many promises are there so after pushing each result we can actually check if the results array dot length which means the resolved data or the resolved items are equal to the promises so if we got four promises now do we have four results if yes then we can resolve this results array finally so in this case we are going to check this against the promises array dot length and then if that's the case then we can resolve this main combined promise you could also rename this to resolve combine and reject combine whatever you want to call it if you want to make it more clear or readable so you could here say resolve combine and here you can say results array so you can resolve this writer now if i run this you are going to see the result because we are resolving it as the final output so here when all of them are resolved after two seconds because again the longest duration is two seconds in this array of promises so when all of them are 
marked done or all of them are pushed to the results array then this is executed and then this code is executed as well now in the case of error we can simply put a catch around this promise or the current promise so it's going to go through each promise and even if one of them fails we are going to reject the whole result or reject combined in this case so after this then we can simply put a catch here and here we can say err and then if that's the case then we are going to say reject combine and we are going to pass this error in this case and that's pretty much it now that we have this let's try this with a forced rejection so i can say true and here if i run this you will see that after two seconds we are going to get an error there you go you can see the same output as before so if i summarize this for you what we are doing is we are first creating a results array then we are going through each promise and then resolving each promise and the result that we get from each resolution we push that into the results array and we check if the results array has the same length as the promises so we got four promises four results five promises five results and if that's the case we resolve the final combined promise from this function and if any one of them fails we just reject this and never resolve this in this situation so i hope that makes sense and that's pretty much it for this video i hope you learned something new if you did press the thumbs up button subscribe to the channel if you have not already if you think this video is going to help someone understand promises better do share them tag me on twitter or facebook or whichever platform you are on and as always happy coding i'm gonna see you in the next video